actually it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense yes a y-n or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet to get an isolation with the with the linebacker tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him if he's not to drive down on the first man to his inside if the y-n has the linebacker taken out he cuts inside if the y-n has the linebacker here he comes all the way around if you look at this play what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here What's up, guys? Welcome into Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. Find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. Email us, Packers Total Access at gmail.com. Text us. 865-658-5824. 865-658-5824. We are live on YouTube, X, and Rumble. Joined alongside Tim, live in Green Bay. We've got Jacob the Beard up there in Wisconsin as well. Gentlemen, how are we doing tonight? Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to M. Smitty for getting us that giggity sound, by, by the way. Always coming through in the clutch. Yes, thank but, you. Uh, Doing yeah. great. Happy to be here. This is awesome. Yeah, it's 68 degrees and sunny. I don't know, man. I don't know about you, Tim, but I'm – it's one of the best Wisconsin days that I can remember in recent oh, history. Yeah. It's just perfect outside. Yeah, That's what Ben Holden said in the chat here. He said, good evening from Whitewater. Just got done grilling ribeye, searching for the next Jenkins slash Tom, maybe Coleman from TCU. There you go. All right. So, okay. Add him to the list to study. Um, I'll tell you what, if you'll put his full name, position, and then obviously uh, TCU next to it. I think it's Brandon Coleman, he's supposed to be one of the toughest guys in the draft. He's like a just a tough, tough, really strong guy. Write him down for me, Jacob, or or just remind me afterwards, and I'll make sure that we had him worked into the board. He may not be on the board right now. So the board is coming along really, really nice. We actually found a, I think, could potentially be a a Packer target a little later in the draft we found earlier. So uh, we were in here chatting with M. Smitty earlier, 1386, said Miles Harden out of uh, South Dakota – was uh, also one I thought might be a good one to take a look at for a later round. And then uh, the one before that, he said, I was looking at some later round cornerbacks and wondered if you guys had taken a look at Tarheeb Steele out of Maryland. So Tarheeb Steele out of Maryland and Miles Harden out of South Dakota. I actually worked them up while while I was waiting on the, the show time to start here. And uh, Tarheeb finished 245th on my board. And then when I worked up Miles Harden, he's 184th. So a uh, little, little more depth to the board there. Appreciate the uh, recommendation there, Ian Smitty. So, uh, yeah. So Turtles in the chat says 11 days out till the draft. Let's go. I guess that's what, what – what what's that saying right there? Ooh. Leg. Leg. I think he meant to say let go, but it went leggy. Uh, Lego my ego. Got you. Sponsor <laughs> the show, guys. Sponsor the show. Giggity. <laughs> Um, speaking of sponsors, let's give a quick shout out to our sponsor this evening, and that's the great folks over at Ticket King, the official ticket provider of Packer Fan Total Access, Wisconsin based since 1992, specializing in Packers tickets. Uh, they are Wisconsin's largest ticket source with offices next to Lambeau Field as well as in Milwaukee. You can click on the link in the video description that'll send you to theticketking.com where you can register for free as a customer and get ready for that schedule release coming up here in May. They're going to be able to save you guys and gals a ton of money on Packers tickets this year. I believe both home and away. Make sure you go check out their website, theticketking.com, the official ticket provider of Packer fan total access. Thank you all for supporting us here. So, um, so I stumbled onto a prospect earlier today. Um, I know why you were giggling too, Jacob. It, nothing like getting the giggity soundbite right before you read the, the, the ad read. Right? We, just, a, we always have such awesome uh entryways into that that ad read <laughs> and by awesome you mean the most amateur yeah on the history of the earth so um hey, at least it is quagmire approved <laughs> exactly <laughs> so we uh i was i was kind of coming through some information earlier today and and was looking at some of the thresholds and one player that popped up within the thresholds at the linebacker position meets all the criteria for a Packers draft pick at the linebacker position. And uh, his name was Joe, it's either Andreessen or Andressen. 
Andreessen, maybe? How do you say that, Jacob? How would you pronounce this? I think he must be Swedish. So that's like Andreessen. Andreessen? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So anyway, six foot one, 232 pounds. Look at the PFF grades, guys. He's out of Buffalo. Okay. So he played for Buffalo. Um, and keep in mind um, who played for Buffalo, James Starks, if I remember correctly, running back, right? Back in the day, um, had a played a crucial role in that Super Bowl run back in 2010, 2011. But PFF grade for 2023 was an 89.6, for 2022, an 85.7, for 2021, an 83.1. And 2020, a 91.6. So this dude has never scored under an 80, according to PFF, at the linebacker position. So immediately go over, check his RAS, a 9.36. Obviously, the hot is a little bit of an issue there. Um, he, he came in just a, a little under six foot one, so he would be more of that Will or Sandbacker. Um, and he uh, bench pressed 32, <laughs> 32 reps in the bench press. For a score of 9.90, his weight, 240 pounds, gave him a score of 7.48. Vertical jump, 38 inches at 9.33. Um, broad jump of 10.02 10.02 for an 8.62 score. 40-yard dash of 4.64 for a score of 8.11. Um, let's see, 20-yard split was a 2.69 for a score of 7.74. 10-yard split of 1.59 for an 8.69 score. And then the shuttle, he absolutely lit it up to 4.22, giving him a score of 8.71. A little bit slower in the three cone. Nonetheless, met that top threshold for linebacker prospects with the Green Bay Packers. So what I did was I went ahead and worked him in here with the PFF grades and everything. And if I can get my board up here, I'll show you exactly where he fell. I can't remember where he was at right offhand. But let's do a quick search and see where he comes in at. Let's see here. We'll go control F. Joe. Sure. What's that? Really good numbers, man. I just I can't believe he slipped through the cracks like that because that was um like you said that's that's pretty I, impressive. I can't believe he's not even on the thirty third teams radar right at all. Wow. And so here's what we've got. What we essentially came up with, he lands in the one hundred and eighty nine spot on my board. So PFF wise, he in twenty twenty two he was the twenty first highest graded linebacker. In twenty twenty three he was the eighth highest graded linebacker on the consensus big board back in January, 571 on it. Okay. So the score that I came up with and averaging everything out, obviously with a, uh, a, a five point bonus there from the RAS puts him at a 195, which puts him in the 189 spot on my board. You'll notice here a new addition to the board. These are some of the final steps we're getting into now. See this dark green right here. That means they have a perfect – they meet the threshold perfectly for their respective positions. Okay, so anyone you see with that dark green, that's what that means. So another thing to take into consideration here is we go down the board now, something else that we added in. You remember we added in kind of the magenta, the purple, or what have you. That means they were a top 30 visit, and they also were at the Senior Bowl. We know that the Packers love drafting guys from the Senior Bowl. And in the last few years, top 30 visits have turned out to be a little less than 50% of their top 30 visits they've ended up drafting. So if a prospect is on the top 30 visit list and they were at the Senior Bowl, higher probability the Packers got them on their radar, at least based off of precedent. And then you meet the threshold. What you're looking for are these players where you've got the strong threshold meeting there along with the top 30 in the Senior Bowl. So those players, if we go down this board real quick and you look at them, you, you can see the threshold. There's several of them. But as we climb on down, the first one that meets both of those are all three, I should say. Top threshold, top 30 visit, as well as senior bowl, Tyler Gotten out of uh, Oklahoma. All right. So the next one, if we go on down here, would be Mr. Surprise, surprise, Traven Wallace, linebacker out of Kentucky. So – if I had to put money on the Packers drafting players, those are two I would probably put a little bit of cheddar on if I was going to bet on the draft. I'm not betting on the draft. Just so some of you draft junkies out there are like, yes, that's something to put money on. Other than that first round bet we got going. Right, correct. <laughs> yeah, the next tap. Can't forget that. So <laughs> just keep an eye on those two players. The thing that sucks about Tyler Gotten, in my opinion, is I don't see him as worthy of the 25th pick. He's sitting 61st on my board. Keep in mind, I'm in the minority because um, consensus big board had him at 36. 
The uh, 33rd team had him at 25. Daniel Jeremiah had him at 17. The thing that brought him down were the two PFF grades at the tackle position there. But, again, like I was telling Ryan offline, we were chatting a little bit, 58 would be absolutely perfect for me if he were to fall that far. I just don't see him falling that far. So anything you want to add to that, let's go around the horn with it, whether it's, uh, like I said, uh, Mr. Uh, Joe Andresen or uh, or what we talked about here with the big board. Go ahead, Jacob. I mean, honestly, just because um, it's got – it's right in front of my face here. Do you have Katan Aladapo? Is he at like 67 on your board? Is that what I see? Let's see. I think so. Yeah, he's pretty – He's, he's also, also a player that has the uh, Senior Bowl and the top 30 visits. So that's – I didn't realize he was ranked that high on your board, plus that he, would, he met that criteria. Um, yeah, the problem and, is he doesn't meet the threshold, though. The, the top threshold. Let me tell you how close he is. You keep going, though. Keep going. No, I just was going to say I, I didn't realize that um, he checked off so many boxes. So, like, that's just one player where, you know, I would be over the moon. I honestly don't care where we – I mean, don't take him in maybe first or second, but if somebody – if for some reason you want to tell me that he's worth a third-round pick and, like, other teams see him like that, I could see that because we've talked about it before. That might be the biggest swing and overall consensus that you have among – several platforms i mean you like clayton here has him at 67 i've seen certain uh boards have him in the third round fourth round and then pff has him at the seventh i've had other uh, like nfl draft buzz has him i think pretty low as well so i don't know man that'd be cool um as far as specifically for like guyton though i just we talked about it i don't i don't want it i don't want it and i definitely don't want it at 25 not at 41 if he falls past that i'd be i'd take it with a spoonful of sugar i guess and help the medicine go <laughs> so yeah oladapo the only thing he doesn't meet as far as the the thresholds for the uh for the packers is you've got to have for the safety position you've got to have the 80 at least the 80 percentile in the broad jump he came in at 37 percent again that doesn't mean the packers aren't going to draft him they may they may draft surprise us all and, and take oladapo with the 41st pick right it's just trying to kind of paint a picture of, all right, what are they looking at the most, right, as far as thresholds, and then see which players line up. But, yeah, so I don't think by no stretch of the imagination Oladapo will be taken off their board at any round. It's just <laughs> if he could have just hammered that broad jump out, you'd feel a lot better about it. But, yeah, I've got him significantly higher than most. Um, I got Oladapo up that high because he was the 68th ranked safety in 2022. He was the 13th ranked safety. Uh, in 2023, the consensus big board had him at 123 back in January. And then the 33rd team has him at 76. He scored an eight plus RAS. So we got a little bonus there that puts him in the 69 spots or in the uh, 66 spot overall. So, Tim, what do you think uh, when it comes to uh, what we talked about? The threshold, the linebacker, old Joey boy. Um, I like oh, it. I like it. Andres Andreessen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you said he's more of a will. Um, well, he's six foot one, and they said he actually measured out a, a little less than six foot one with the okay. official measurements. So yeah. that would suggest, based off of the 49ers, you know, normal threshold and the Jets' normal threshold, which is kind of the closest thing we have to this Jeff ha Jeff Halfley defense at the pro level, probably fit more of a wheel backer or a stack Sam, I would imagine. Tim, look at his snaps by position, though. Can you pull that up? I, I was going to comment on this earlier. The guy is everywhere. Free safety, that. yeah. D-line box. Black corner. Like, <laughs> 98 times. Free safety. Wow. Yeah. Slack corner. Up, wide wide corner. corner. Wow. He plays uh, everywhere. I think that, I mean, like Clayton was saying, it kind of looks like a Goody type pick, man. With, yeah. you know, this combined with the RAS score, I could definitely see uh, Goody taking a look at this guy and just saying, Diggity. <laughs> that's oh. that's going to be the new drop for a prospect that we like. We're just going to hit him with the giggity. Or anytime we come across Dylan Lobby, right? We're going to have to hit it for him, too, right? Is it anytime anytime Clayton it? mocks Tyler Newbin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> giggity. So, um, yeah, that's how the board sits right now. Um, there was something else I was going to hit on here, too, right off the bat. Oh, Dane Brugler's tweet. This is kind of cool. Um, let me go ahead and slide this up real quick and just, well, let's do this since we were talking about will, some people are going, what do you mean by will? What does it mean in this defense? So this was based off of the Pete Carroll style four, three, and well, more specifically Robert Sala's defense that he took 
to the new to the New York Jets, where they play a lot of buzz, a lot of what we call cover three buzz. Um, the Will is the most athletic player in this group, is generally the weak side linebacker known for his elite open field tackling on cutbacks and his zone coverage ability in the flats. If he's playing Sam, a strong side linebacker that usually matches up with the tight end in the passing game or the, quote, deep hook zone, assigned gap defender across the run or against the run that may also blitz on occasion. So if we take another peek back, let's see if that sounds like him. So which one does it sound like, the Will or the Sam in this uh, specific situation? Let's look at that we have a coverage grade. Um, coverage grade 75.2. Look at the pass rush grade 81.3. Run defense grade, you got to be able to take on the strong side of the formation at the Sam. It's a 90.8. Might fit more of the Sam role there. Sam stack. We're not talking about putting a five man front up there and him rushing the quarterback on a consistent basis. Just someone who can get after the quarterback a bit when you need him to. So, um, and again, he played for Buffalo. We know that, right? Like, it's not like he was playing powerhouse programs, but like Tim said, it just kind of feels like one of those players that on draft night, we would go, who, who is this? We're, we're starting to uncover some of these prospects that really beat those thresholds. And if I scroll down on my board here too, show you guys this real quick, you're going to see the couple that are graded with just a 600. I just put a 600 flat because there was no information on them whatsoever. But these players all met that threshold as well, okay? Um, and shout out to Chris Nichols for sending me the thresholds. Really appreciate you, buddy. Um, Dubin Okinawa, maybe? Okinawa. What, what's that, Jacob? Okinawa. There you go. He met it, linebacker out of Pittsburgh State. Um, Harold Joyner, linebacker out of Michigan State. And uh, Bo Richter, linebacker out at Air Force, they all met the criteria, as well as a quarterback, Davius Richard, okay? Um, he's a quarterback out of North Carolina uh, Central, I believe, is, is the school he played for. Then you had a halfback, Michael Chris Ike, um, halfback out of Delaware State. They all met the full criteria for their respective positions. Now, what's crazy is this Davius Richard, PFF grade, 12th, Highest graded quarterback in 2022 and the 40th highest in 2023. Just small school, though. You know what I mean? You got to kind of take it for what it's worth. So that's the reason I didn't put a complete grade. I just put 600 across the board because I didn't want to just use those and say, this is a top 50 prospect. You know what I mean? So that's uh, kind of just some some people to kind of keep an eye on a little later in the draft. We're going to continue to work the board out, too, and see if we can find some more guys. So um, yeah. what you think about this? See, SDM40 says Goot was asked at the combine about the differences in Mike, Sam, and Will for the defense, and he said they were basically all the same for what it's worth. See, that's that's the way I've kind of looked at it in the past. If you're a stack backer, it if your Mike goes down, guess what happens? Your second best linebacker takes over as Mike. They're not going, nope, he's too short. But if in a perfect world, if everyone was even across the board, you would want that Mike to be a little bit bigger. And the reason being is he's considered a gap destroyer in this style of defense, right? Like, let me let me explain this to you. At, a, at the Mike, okay, more specifically, the positional breakdowns follow these guidelines. Mike, middle linebacker slash captain of the unit and gap destroyer against the run uh, key, read defender, okay, <laughs> both pre-snap and at the heart of zone coverages. So you want your best linebacker playing mock. It's that simple. That's why I kind of feel like if they were putting Quay at the mock and wearing the green dot, being that gap destroyer, that that captain in the 34 front, they're probably going to – I think at least there's a decent chance he's going to play mock. It's just when you read Will, the most athletic player in this group, is generally the weak side linebacker, you immediately think, well, that's going to have to be Quay, right? So, um, but, yeah, I completely agree with that that comment there, whoever it was. I know it's taken down now. Um, Could I ask a question of you quick? Yeah, man. Like, do you see any sort of transformation? So forgive me or correct me if I'm wrong here, but when Micah Parsons got drafted, they didn't know what to do with him, it sounds like, right? They didn't know which position to play him at for a while. I think they tried to make him a mic, it sounded like, and then they realized, hey, this dude, if he rushes basically as an edge or just <clears throat> any sort of delayed blitz or um, he's just a monster. Um, is there anything that you could see in a parallel that could have Quay shift into that role? If another player, like even uh, like talk, Tim's talked about, if McDuffie can slide into there, if they draft a Colson or a Cooper or something like that, where they feel more comfortable, and then they can just let Quay use that freakish, absolute, you know, talent that we drafted him for, I think. 
Yeah, the the thing that Dallas did there, and you got to think it's two different styles of defense too. Dallas likes to run uh, a whole lot of, uh, if I remember correctly, a whole lot of nickel and dime, which Robert Sala ran, I think, 80% nickel in New York, if I remember correctly. Uh, but they play a ton of man coverage, the Dallas Cowboys do. So when they're playing that zero man coverage, that was allowing them to fire Micah more, right? What they realized was this dude is the best pass rusher on our team. Let's just put him on the edge. So they started putting him on the edge. Um, do I do I think Quay is as good as Micah? No. And I know that's not what you're asking. But as far as that first step, that quickness, that raw talent, I mean, yeah, he's just as quick as Micah, I believe. He's got he, – He might be a better coverage backer than – yeah. I think he – see, that's the way I see him. And, and if you'll remember, I don't know what his grade was last year, but the year before, he had a great coverage grade, he being uh, Quay Walker. And to me, that fits more of that mock role, right? Um, that's just kind of how I see it. But, yeah, Jacob, what it comes down to is, all right, the goal is to get pressure with just a four-man rush so you can drop more guys into coverage, right? I know everybody thinks that Jeff Halfley's going to come in and just run all these exotic blitzes. If we're going up based off of what the Jets did, that's really not the case. They like to get after the quarterback with a four-man rush. Same thing as San Francisco, mm -hmm. right? Just bring that four-man rush and leave those, you know, extra bodies in coverage and get after it. I don't ever see them putting Quay as an edge defender, and that's exactly what they did with Micah Parsons. So um, I would say, no, I think Quay is more of a, a stack backer, a mock or will top. Could probably play Sam, but the only thing about playing Sam – when you're playing the Sam backer position, the strong side linebacker, you're lined up over the tight end. So you're going to be asked to cover that tight end occasionally, but also you've got to be able to set the edge on the strong side of the formation. That's why it's called a Sam. It's the strong side linebacker. I just didn't see Quay as that guy. I didn't see him as that guy that was just overly physical. I'm going to go in here and meet the block. You know what I'm saying? It was more of a, all right, let, let them commit. Now let me make my move type thing. Maybe that'll change. Maybe Halfley will look at the tape and go, no, dude, I need you playing down freaking hill, right? And everybody let Joe Barry kind of take the rap last year. Clean slate now, right? You, there's no more blaming the D.C. that, oh, he's not letting us play fast. That's all out the window now. If we don't do it now, then these guys are never going to do it, right? But I think Quay's more than capable, man. I really do. Um, John Schmidt in the chat says, Quay tries to get around blocks instead of through them too much for the mock spot. Mock. It's, it's so true. That's exactly how i seen the tape, too. I didn't see him – all right, let's meet them at the point of attack. And when you look at it from the offense's perspective and you're running the ball, the last thing you want is someone blowing the play up on your side of the line of scrimmage, right? If you can get them to hesitate a touch, you've got the upper hand. Yeah. Because pre-snap, you're going to try to gain the hat count, right? If you can gain the hat count, you get the advantage there. And then you've got someone being hesitant rather than attacking his spot. Then, you know, those two positives are going to equal a positive gain in the running game. Um, but, again, we don't know what was being said in those meeting rooms. It could have been the case. Hey, I need you guys play back, play back, play it safe. I just have a hard time believing. I really do. Um, but anyway, so that's good. Uh, good linebacker talk there, Jacob. You got anything else as far as that goes? No, I just um, <clears throat> no. Like I said, the chat brought up some good ideas, and that just sparked my my brain. Um, it's so funny how we think about like size schematics and how we have to fit this perfect mold. I just always think about. Like my favorite linebacker when I was a kid was Zach Thomas. I think he was very undersized, and yeah, the guy was just sure. an animal for his whole career, you know. So, yeah. you know, every now and then, obviously, you go by what the averages are and statistics and all that. But sometimes, like we talked about it specifically at the safety position, every now and then, you just got a guy that plays football. I don't care what his 40 is, what his three cone yeah. is. He just comes in and he's the best football player that day. My, my <laughs> guy was always, uh, uh, Tim Harris. Tim Harris was like the first yeah. linebacker I can remember just being a fan of at a young age. Yeah, see, I, I grew up around my brother who's significantly older than me. He's a big Pittsburgh fan, so I got to see the Blitzburg defense. LeVon Kirkland, 300-pound linebacker. Oh, <laughs> my God, bro. It was so much fun to watch. Um, you had Greg Lloyd on the outside with the, the late, great Kevin Green. So they were your two outside linebackers, essentially. And that was back when they were really firing on all cylinders with the zone blitz defense. So um, all those fire zones and things. And, and you had Rod Woodson in the back in the in the secondary with Carnell Lake and Darren Perry. It's amazing how you can remember the names of the entire lineup on a team that you 
pulled for you know when you were nine years old but <clears throat> that's what sports does to us right so um let's see what else we can hit on here with the board we kind of hit on all right that's just explaining that wrinkle has now been added these are some of the final steps we're putting into place we're still waiting for greg cosell updates on specific players as well as daniel jeremiah's top 150 so you see some of these spaces here is going to get shaken up. I'm excited to see where he get, he lands Tyler Newbin on his top 150. Um, same thing with like a Braylon Trice, a Christian Haynes. They were outside of the top 50 at the time, so that's what that column is there. Once we get that information in, it'll shuffle things around one last time, and then we'll be ready to build the horizontal board. It just hit me today, man. I'm like, you know, I, I think I said earlier we were expecting 30 to 50 people at my house this weekend. We're throwing a little a little get together. And uh, found out from Andy today, it's actually 60 that have confirmed. So Ooh. I'm trying to get the property together and everything. And then I'm going, damn, the first round is next Thursday. Holy cow. Like, like <laughs> I'm going to be working my rear end off all week long to get this ready. And then we're going to turn around and say, I got to build the horizontal board. I got to get laminated, print it off. Got to make sure Emilio has everything oh. he needs up here. You know what you I mean? You need to get Emilio down there a couple days extra. Just put him in the yard. Just start make him do yard work, right? <laughs> He's already offered to help. He has, but uh, he's uh, man, I'm I'm sure he's covered. He's probably asleep right now. That dude's so busy. Um, as busy as my landscaping business is up here in Northeast Tennessee, <clears throat> Knoxville, Maryville, that area has got to be like twice as swamped because they, it just it, it gets warmer down there a little bit quicker, and there's a, a lot larger population. But yeah, we'll get them up here and put them to work on something for sure. Um, this was a cool tweet that came out from Dane Brugler. And I'm going to keep this tweet here, screenshot it, and I'm going to write these players down. I know some of them are on the board, but this is what Dane Brugler tweeted out. He said, my highest graded non-combine prospects by position on offense, quarterback Carter Bradley from South Alabama, running back Blake Watson from Memphis, wide receiver Mason Tipton from Yale, tight end Colson. I don't want to say it. How do you say that name, Jacob? Uh, I'll go with Yankoff. <laughs> Yankoff. <laughs> Very well played. Tied in Colson Yankoff um, from UCLA. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Offensive tackle Travis Glover from Georgia State. We talked about him. Remember Travis Glover? Yep. Um, interior offensive lineman Dalton Tucker from Marshall. On oh, defense, he's got edge defender Grayson Murphy from UCLA. Defensive tackle Christian Boyd from Northern Iowa. By the way, shout out Eric Sutherland, new member on the Patreon channel. Hey, and Eric, make sure you cancel – your membership on YouTube to the PTA Posse, okay, since you're over there now. Again, I don't know when that will go back active. It could go back any day. It might be several months. But um, he's the one who brought Christian Boyd up to us the first time. Dane, Brug Dane Brugler uh, agrees with that. Linebacker Winston Reed out of Weber State. Uh, cornerback Quantez Stigers, Stiggers maybe, from the CFL. And then you got safety Mark Perry from TCU. Um, any of those names grab your attention there, Jacob. And again, we're going to make sure that all these land on my board when it's said and done. Yeah, definitely. Um, I had my eye on Blake Watson. He grades out very well um, in PFF. Travis Glover, like you talked about, we talked about that guy from uh, Georgia State. Another one of those people that it's hard to get some um, some tape on, but we were able to kind of track that down a little bit. Grayson Murphy's one that I've had my eye on for quite a while. He's I'd say a lower tier edge, but um, definitely somebody that would he, he graded out actually really, really decent, if I'm not mistaken, on PFF kind of consistently. He just reminds me of like a Preston Smith kind of like he's not very flashy, but he's going to he's big. He's going to set the edge. He's one of those type dudes. And then obviously uh, Christian Boyd, um, that's one of my draft crushes. I don't know where we could see us picking him up because I could see him going. I could see him going in the second round. I could see him going in the fifth, you know, somewhere in there. So um, and I've heard of Mark Perry. The other guys, though, I, I'm gonna have to check them out. So, yeah, Travis Glover is sitting in the 147 spot um, on my board. So we've got him already in the system because he was kind of on the Packers' radar before. So he sits at 147. Um, another thing, Jacob, you mentioned uh, Grayson Murphy. A listener let me know this on YouTube on the YouTube comments. There's two brothers that both play for UCLA, and they're both edge defenders: Gabriel Murphy and yep. Grayson Murphy. Yeah. Gabriel Murphy, I think, is in the top 50. Grayson Murphy's poor guy. He didn't get the athletic uh, talent given to him there, Tim. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, always a bridesmaid, never a bride type thing there for old Grayson. <laughs> but the fact that Dane Brugler mentions him, you know, maybe there's something to that for sure. But anything grab your attention here, 
Tim? Uh, not just kind of like Jacob said, you know, Murphy and Boyd for sure. Um, Winston Reed, the linebacker out of uh, Weber State, Weber State. I haven't seen much on him. I can't find. I was on the thirty third team. I can't find him there at all. Gotcha. Um, we'll see if he's on my board here in just a second. Great, Larry, right here. Uh, he says Weber Weber State is his alma mater, but he doesn't follow it too closely. He doesn't know anything about Reed. Come on, Larry, look that up for us. <laughs> Actually, just tell us: is it Weber State or Weber State? Yeah, it's Weber or Weber. Because <laughs> we all learned something if we could figure that part out. But, um, <laughs> that's the goal every episode. We just learn one thing every episode. Uh, Grayson Murphy. Edge defender out of UCLA, one of the twin brothers there. He comes in in the 210 spot on my board. And then, of course, we've got Christian <clears throat> Boyd comes in at 155 on my board. Let's see if we got Winston on here. I don't think we do. We do not. So, Winston Reed is not on the board. Um, Quantez uh, Steigers is not as well. And then Mark Perry. Let's see if Mark Perry's on here. He is not, too. So, we're going to add, like, I don't know, eight or nine players to the board tonight. That's absolutely awesome. So, and I, I told you guys before, I usually try to key in on just the top 100, top 150. We are now up to what, 250 prospects on the board. So, <laughs> pretty cool though, man. Because again, if I wasn't doing the pod with you guys and gals, um, we, uh, I wouldn't have went yeah, that far. <laughs> we burr state. Weber. Apparently, they're decent. So, Coach yeah, just had some running. He played Weber State in college. Good program. Good yeah. stuff. Man. There we go. I love that we got a bunch of At least we, we can uh, not sound like idiots now when we uh, well, now they they cleared it up for us. At least we'll say okay. Weber State. Well, yeah. ain't, nothing, ain't nothing I can do about me sound like an idiot. At least you guys aren't going to sound like idiots. <laughs> Until I take some, uh, some speech classes here, it's always going to be that way. <laughs> um, let's see. Anything else you guys want to hit on? We're at the 31-minute mark already. Holy cow, 32 minutes we just turned over. Um, Jacob, anything else you want to touch on, man, that just as far as this conversation we're having right now? Well, specifically not – well, I, I do have something for – oh, look at who's in here. Eric Sutherland decided to show his ugly mug. Thanks. He said good evening, everyone. I figured we finally got good. one. We, we can put it on the screen, so. We can put it up. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, um, I did send you a couple clips, just some screenshots. If you if you want to pick those up, if we need something else yeah. later. But um, as far as this goes, man, I mean, this is it's been, I think like like it's been really interesting this off season because we talked about it earlier. How usually mock drafts, people think you're looking for a certain thing. The mock draft practice and the way that we've kind of done it in different areas mm -hmm. has given us the chance to find some of these guys. I mean, you think about where we are compared to the year last year and the year before that. I mean, I had no idea how to find prospects and now we're getting to the point where we've got this great audience so i would encourage you guys if you do between now and the draft start finding guys where you're like hey nobody nobody has this guy on their draft board can you take a peek at him feel free to shoot me a dm clayton a dm because that's how like we sit here we learn we get better and um it's just been fun because i'm starting to build like you have your your the get the guys you're pulling for the guys that you don't think it's actually going to happen but you might be happy to see them go to a good team like it's just such a cool dynamic when you start to learn everybody that's going in the next class it's just it's been really fun yeah no i completely agree man the more eyeballs you've got on the entire draft too the more you can learn and, and again i know there's people that i'm so tired of mock drafts i'm tired of, if you stop keying in on the whole hey let's try to be the smartest people in the room and okay. use these every mock draft every situation as an exercise you can come away learning so much from it um, I've got those two screen grabs for you, Jacob. We'll hit on them in just a second. Let's point this out real quick. <clears throat> you guys can see in here some of the screen grabs I've already got queued up um, from players that we had taken on a fairly regular basis with our mock drafts. And I wanted to see how it how many of them actually matched up with the full threshold, right? Meaning, all right, there's nothing else they could have physically um, that would have them be more of a goody top pick from a from a physicality standpoint. Um, if you look on my board here, Joe Alt, he meets the criteria. Obviously, he's going to be gone. Roma Dunze, a wide receiver from Washington, just absolutely crushed it. He's a perfect one. The first one that comes in that we would probably have a chance of taking is Mr. Graham Barton. Um, Graham Barton meets all the criteria as an offensive lineman in the interior there at the guard position out of Duke. So that's a name to kind of key in. Exactly. <laughs> He can, Emilio. You're right. Um, the next one is Trey Benson, running back out of Florida State. He's my top running back. 
in the draft. Um, let's see, uh, Trey Benson is in the 34 spot, and the next one is Audric Estime at 38, and then Blake Corum at 41. But uh, Trey Benson meets the criteria. Cooper Beebe, you guys remember him. We talked about him quite a bit, guard. He meets the full criteria as a guard. Um, Chris Jenkins, defensive lineman, he meets the full criteria. As a matter of fact, I think Chris Jenkins was the only defensive lineman that met every single criteria at the at the proper percentile. So that Can was you break down what you're saying when you mean criteria, just so Absolutely. people, if they haven't understood what that means? Yeah, so um, basically – the threshold in which the Packers draft guys. There's certain things that if you go back over the last couple of drafts and say, okay, what what did all of these have in common at each position, right, at specific positions? And it kind of tells you um, what the Packers are looking for. Let's start with interior offensive linemen, right? So you got Graham Barton here. So when you look at interior offensive linemen, and I think Packer Report did this as well in their draft guide, if I remember correctly, Several people have caught on to these thresholds. I try not to put a whole lot of stock in it, but if it's one more thing you can add to the board, then it's a great tool, right? Um, so at the interior offensive line position, basically this is what – I think it's Packer Report that said this in theirs. It says offensive line, tackle, <laughs> and interior. So it says tackle and interior are two of the more predictive positions for what Green Bay likes. Looking at offensive linemen the Packers have drafted in the past – the short shuttle and three cone jump off the page. They also love offensive linemen who have experience playing tackle. Zach Tom was a tier one fit. Sean Ryan was a tier two fit uh, by three one thousandths of a second. They both played tackle in college. Um, Graham Barton played tackle in college, didn't he? So um, Green Bay did not select an offensive lineman in the 2023 draft. Um, it says thresholds, 4.75 or better in the shuttle, 7.75 or better in the three cone. Okay, so obviously we're also talking about RAS quite a bit. It's got to be a 7 plus RAS. So if we key in on Graham Barton, he actually is at the very top of the list as far as the criteria. Okay, um, his RAS, he had a 7 plus, right? Obviously, he's 21 years old. His 475 shuttle, right? A 475 shuttle, you need to be under that was 454. You need to be under a 7.753 cone. His was a 7.31, and he had tackle experience. So he meets all those criteria. That's just one position, right? So now if we were to move, I won't do every position, but if we were to move to defensive line now, let's go interior defensive line and let's see what the criteria is. Um Come on, where are you at? I know I've seen you just a second ago. Here we go. Interior defensive line. It says, since taking over in Green Bay, uh, Gudikins has drafted 10 front seven players. The only thing they all have in common is elite broad jumps. Outside of that, they have all, they've been all over the map in size, length of interior defensive linemen. Uh, Devontae Wyatt was a tier one fit. In the 2023 draft, Kobe Wooden was light but hit everything else. Carl Brooks was a massive outlier. So for those people that think, oh, this is the key to them being a good defensive lineman, Carl Brooks didn't meet the criteria, right? Carl Brooks was evidently fairly far down on the list, and obviously he, he could have been one of our best defensive linemen last year. Is that because he was too big by their criteria standards, if I'm not mistaken, right? Because wasn't he like a 300-pound edge or whatever? Well, that's the thing. All these guys are 300 pounds, too, and so was Devontae Wyatt, so it probably wasn't that. Here's the criteria that Chris Jenkins, he's the only one that meets everything across the board, okay? Um, RAS of 6.5 or higher. His is a 9.55. Uh, let's see, his age, 22 years old. Um, he's you got to be 6 foot 2 or taller. He was 6 foot 2. Um, 295 pounds or more. He was 299 pounds, and you got to have an 80 percentile broad jump or higher. His was 95 percent in the broad jump. You're talking about explosion, Chris Jenkins has got it. So that's what I mean by meeting the criteria. Every position's a little bit different. Like running back, they've got the whole thing. We won't bore everyone with all the details there. But as we continue down the list here again, um, we talked about Trey Benson, top running back on my board. He meets all the criteria for running back. Cooper Beebe at guard. Um, in the 36th spot, he meets the criteria. Chris Jenkins, interior defensive lineman at number 39 on my board, he meets the criteria. Um, tight end Cade Stover is 47th on my board. He meets all the tight end criteria. 
And the tight end seemed a little, a little more, uh, uh, a little. What am I trying to say here? Eek. Not strict, right? Um, as far as them, they're not as picky with them. So here's a tackle. The first tackle on the board that meets the criteria is Dominic Pooney out of Kansas. Okay, he's 55th on my board. He meets all the criteria for tackle. Um, next will be Tyler Gotten, your boy Jacob. I know you're a big fan of Tyler Gotten um, in the 61 spot. All right. Now keep in mind, he's also got the top 30 and the senior bowl there. Right. So keep that in mind. That's absolutely huge. Next player on the board would be wide receiver Ricky Pearsall um, from Florida. And he comes in at the 76 spot. So there's another wide receiver outside of Roma Dunze. Uh, another tight end, Theo Johnson um, at the 81 spot, tight end out of Penn State. Uh, he comes in, like I said, in the 81st position on my board. Next would be halfback George Holani out of Boise State. Some people were going, who in the hell is that, right? Who? <laughs> right. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Um, he's 83rd on my board. He was the 39th. I found him earlier today meeting these criteria. He was the 39th highest graded running back in 2022, the 42nd highest graded running back in 2023, Consensus Big Board had him at 222 back in January. Uh, 33rd team doesn't have him on the board. He scored an 8-plus RAS, meets the criteria. He's in the 83 spot. So we've officially added someone into the top 100 at the running back position that might be on their radar from you know threshold standpoint. Next is Jalen Sundell. We talked about him earlier today, I believe, on Good Morning Lambeau. I listed him as a guard. Um, it seems like that's what everybody across the board out of North Dakota State thinks he is. He comes in in the 89 spot. Had great PFF grades. We drafted him on our little uh, mock draft the other night. And, uh, yeah, he meets all the, the thresholds. Um, let's see here. Jared Wiley tied in out of TCU in the 101st spot. He meets the criteria. <clears throat> Will Shipley at 102, halfback from Clemson. Will Shipley's a guy that's kind of got my attention a little bit. Um, he's got a lacrosse background, I believe. Field hockey lacrosse. I get those two crossed up. Someone was talking the other day. I think it was um, Greg Posell was talking about him and how his competitiveness is what really kind of sets him apart. And that's someone that I don't know, man. He just kind of feels like a Packer. He feels like a leader type, uh, type running back. So anytime you got someone who's multi-sport athlete to it, kind of piques your interest. Again, he scored over a nine as far as RAS. He meets the threshold in the 102 spot. Joe Milton, quarterback out of Tennessee. This one made me want to throw up on my keyboard. <laughs> um, Joe Milton, the third in the 106 spot, he meets the criteria at the quarterback position. Um, let's see, Jalen Wright running back out of Tennessee. That's Joe Milton's teammate, 115 on the big board here, on my big board. He meets the uh, threshold as well. Um, Jaheim Bell tied in out of Florida State in the 130 spot. He meets it. Uh, let's see, in the 131 spot, you got Jalen McMillan, wide receiver out of Washington. He meets it. Um, your boy there, Edifon Ulofosio out of Washington. He meets nice. the criteria, the 132 spot. So um, that's, that's going to be a good guy spot. right there. Yeah. And, and again, you immediately go, okay, 132, what does that mean? Do it in increments of 32, right? That'll kind of tell you about what round would be okay to draft him in, you know? Um, yeah. So I, I don't know what would that, kind of <laughs> <laughs> that would come in, what, about the fourth to fifth round, Jacob, somewhere around yeah. there? Yeah, I was thinking, yep. So that might be someone they, they got their eye on. Um, and again, that's that's somebody that PFF has being uh, late seventh round slash UDFA, so. Right, and that's why we always end up with them, right? <laughs> so, yeah. um, Kendall Milton, halfback out of Georgia. He kind of caught me off guard. Uh, his PFF grades were pretty solid. Um, he uh, he meets the uh, threshold as well. Let's see. Then you've got Ben Sanat. That's what I was saying. There was a flurry of tight ends. Um, Kansas State, 141 spot. Um, he meets it. He had a, a five. Oh, I guess. like him a lot. He's my favorite tight end in this draft. Yeah. Was he the one that we were kind of thinking could play a little H back? Am I thinking right? Uh, I think, that in my opinion, he could. He's – Really good at run blocking. He's good at pass blocking. He's good at, uh, at catching the ball. I just think he's one of the best. Uh, he reminds me of kind of a, a hybrid between Tucker Craft and Musgrave. Just does everything pretty well. So, gotcha. Diggity. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the next one is in the 145 spot. Luke McCaffrey, wide receiver. Ooh. So he meets 
the threshold as well. Can I, can I say real something? Uh, did you ever watch that interview that Christian McCaffrey did about how crazy his father, Ed, grazed them as far as what they do for pregame mm -hmm. rituals? He encouraged him. Uh, he went to a private school or a prep school, and he said that my son's not going to be wearing jeans. It's too heavy on his lower body. He needs to stretch a certain amount of times a day. He'd make them, if they had to wear long pants, he'd cut out uh, slots because he believed that their knees and their thighs needed to express more when they bend in their compression pants. He'd make them be, they'd be eating vitamins, vitamin C, like, I mean, to the point of every single thing that this guy did from sun up to sunrise or to, to, to morning till night was dedicated to football. There was nothing ever in his childhood. So I'm, they did that. And he said that they did that with all of his children. So I'm thinking that Luke McCaffrey, he's just going to be like a Terminator freaking cyborg just comes in and he's like, give me the plays. And I just want to, I want it, dude. I want the it. So one bad. advantage he has over his brother Christian too, is he's going to have a little chip on his shoulder. Christian was hands down the best mm -hmm. running back in the draft. This guy's at the wide receiver position is going to have to kind of fight for it a little bit. And that's, that's how his dad, Ed was Ed McCaffrey. You remember him, Tim scrappy. Oh. God, what a great wide receiver, man. Yep. Hey, if 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 the Broncos don't have Ed McCaffrey, mm -hmm. I don't see them being that powerhouse they were in the 90s. I really don't. He was just that yep. dude that would go across the middle. He had speed. Kind of remind you of Jordy Nelson for a while. Jordy before Jordy. Jordy, before Jordy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, up next in the 166 spot, we got A.J. Barner tied in out of Michigan. He meets the threshold. Isaac Garendo, remember him from the <laughs> combine? Um, oh, yeah. Sure. Did I screw that up, Jake? No, nope, that was good. And I forgot that he was a Badger for the beginning of his career. Right. And he went to end up going to Louisville, right? Halfback. Yep. In the 176 spot, he meets all of the thresholds. He had a five. Obviously, just absolutely crushed the uh, the RAS aspect, you know, with the combine and everything. His big thing is his PFF grade wasn't great in 2022. Other than that, he would probably be a little bit higher on my board. Of course, the consensus big board had him in the 278 spot, too. So, Without the combine, he probably doesn't get drafted, but it helps, you know, it does. Um, up next, we got another linebacker out of Penn State. Worked him up earlier today. He's in the 178 spot. Curtis Jacobs, linebacker out of Penn State. He meets the threshold. The Packers actually met with him at the Shrine Bowl, so keep that in mind. If you see those listed off to the side, that means the Packers met with him at the Senior Bowl, the Shrine Bowl, all that good stuff. Okay, so Curtis Jacobs want to keep up with Traven Wallace, linebacker out of Kentucky. Again, I've got him in the 179 spot. The 33rd team has him like in the 60s. So um, consensus big board had Traven Wallace when I took the information down in the 140 spot. Now, his PFF grade was absolute cheeks in 2023. That's going to bring him down on my board quite a bit. He did have a great RAS, though. And keep in mind, he meets the thresholds. He was a top 30 visit and a senior bowl participant. So high probability the Packers have got their eyes on him. Wait, um, do you know if Curtis Jacobs is the mic? Ask Chris in. That's a great question. Let's see. You guys say something smart. I'll see if I can pull that up real quick. Curtis <laughs> Jacobs. Another giggity. Uh, <laughs> Sam Beto was asking, too. He asked Clayton, does age matter? I mean, obviously, <laughs> age matters. It just depends on the threshold. You know, If your name is DiCaprio, absolutely. If um, your name <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, Trade uh, Ranger, another uh, 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 it does matter in these thresholds. Like, for example, let me let me try to find Ray Davis real quick. I know we got the running backs on here, and we sweet were talking baby about Ray Davis. Yeah, sweet baby Ray Davis. Me being a Kentucky fan, because you know he's he's a little bit older, right? So yes. Ray Davis on this list, where are you at? Yeah, so he's like in the middle of the pack, and he's twenty four years old. They they still have it in the green. I think twenty five is the age in which they're like, nope, there's no way they're going to touch him. So I don't see any position where the age of 24 affects them. Just going through here, it's just the 25, and then there's there's one guy that's a 26. My wow. God, 25 is pretty old for a rookie, right? Absolutely, yeah. 24 is. You know, right? 23 is like okay. I wish he was 22, DiCaprio, right? But, <laughs> yeah. So to me, to answer your question, it looks like as far as uh, I think it was like I said, I think it was Packer Report. Is who it was. Either it was either Packer Report or Packer Wire that did this. Um, they seem to think 24 is okay. So I'll tell you what, if you listen to Ryan's pod that released today, uh, where he goes through the draft prospects for running back, I think that he may have already all of a sudden been swayed that the Packers may be taking Braylon Allen. It, it he's the youngest player in this draft. He is the youngest. He's only he's gonna be, I think, 20 to 21 his whole rookie year, and most of it's gonna be around 20-ish or whatever. Um 
and he's like a stand-up guy. He already has a charity set up in Fond du Lac. Like he listed all this kind of stuff, and oh, they're gonna, heard, move, they're gonna move him back to linebacker. They're gonna move, and and I didn't realize so that Dan Brugler they dive in, so they he got recruited to go there by Jim Leonard, and then Jim Leonard wanted him to play safety. Then they actually switched him to linebacker. Then they actually so he's been a running back for like fifteen mm-hmm. days. You know what I mean? And he's he's. I don't know. I, I, I'm now starting to get a little more intrigued. But Dude, the, thing, the thing about Braylon Allen, too, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, from the stuff I've heard, he is, like, so freaking mature. Like, that's, like, mm-hmm. one of his strengths is, like, this dude's a leader. He's all about it, you know. Um, or as he was saying in the 90s, well, about it, about it. What's that, Jake? Weight room <laughs> freak. About it. They say that they, he, like, they have to, like, tell him to stop lifting. Like, you're, you're doing too much. Like, it's – I'm glad I wasn't the only one that heard that because I, I, that's the thing that always stuck in my mind, like – I want him to pan out. The only knock I had on him is Greg Cosell was like, he's a big back that doesn't play like a big back. Right. right? Now that's not the reason not to draft somebody. You know what I mean? Uh, but again, early in the process, anyone who keeps saying, you know, like, hey, let's take this player because he plays for Wisconsin, or let's take this player because in my case, he plays for Kentucky or Notre Dame. I try to be overly critical of that because I don't want to fall into that. I don't want to be that Packer fan that's just like, yeah, all the teams I like in college, let's draft those players. You know, yeah. who wants a team full of Kentucky players? I know I don't. You looked at the record here lately. It's uh, <laughs> not that good. So uh, Curtis Jacobs, whoever asked that question, he is a mock according to the 33rd team. They have a 59 grade on him. He's sitting in the 183 spot right now. When I took the information down early, he was in the 172 spot. So – um, 6'1", 241, just about an inch shy of being that 6'2", that we want to see. You know, obviously we've seen with the Jets and the 49ers defense if Halfley goes that that route. So hopefully that answered the question for whoever asked that. Um, so, again, we talked about Trayvon Wallace. The next one is Jordan McGee, linebacker from Temple. He meets the threshold in the 181 spot here. Then you got our boy Joe Andresen. Um, linebacker out of Buffalo. We just found him today. He comes in the 189 spot. He meets the thresholds. Uh, Jalen Ford, linebacker out of Texas in the 195 spot. He meets the thresholds as well. Um, Tip Ryman, tied in out of Illinois. You remember him from the combine, right? He kind of stood out a bit. Um, he had a, a, a five, so a, a, a nine plus RAS at the combine. Um, he meets all the thresholds as well. Like I said, there was a whole bunch of tight ends that did. Evan Williams, safety out of Oregon. I had to work him up earlier today. He comes in a 199 spot. He meets the threshold. Uh, Jarvion Howard, halfback out of Alcorn State. Alcorn State, one time driver, right? No. Hey um, he meets all the thresholds at halfback. He's in the, uh, like I said, the 200 spot. Um, then you got Kamani Vidal. Uh, he is the halfback out of Troy, coming in at the 202 spot. He meets the uh, threshold there as well. Also, the Packers met with him. Um, I guess at his pro day, they were at his pro day, he being uh, Kamani Vidal. Uh, Tyrone Tracy, you guys know I'm big on him, running back, wide receiver, hybrid. Kind of To me, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Randall Cobb from back in the day. Um, he um, is one of those guys that can kind of do it all, also a good return guy. 205 is the spot he landed in. Um, Greg Cosell raved over him, absolutely raved over him. He meets the thresholds for the halfback spot. Um, Nick. Gargulia, I guess I'm saying that right. Gar Gargilo. Gabagool. Gabagool. <laughs> Who? <laughs> In the 206 spot, he's a center out of South Carolina. Um, I need to paint him blue real quick. I'm glad we go through and do this stuff. Bang, done. So he's a center. He scored a nine plus RAS, I believe. He meets the thresholds for the Packers as well. Um Ke- uh, Keaton Slovis, quarterback out of BYU at 226. He meets the threshold. Jalen Key, safety out of Alabama at the 227 spot. He meets the threshold. If we don't draft this guy right here, linebacker out of Southern Miss, Patrick Swayze Bozeman um, <laughs> in the 230 spot. His name's Swayze Bozeman, unless it, somebody's pranking me with the information. And he's from Southern Miss. I mean, yeah. He had a, uh, a plus nine RAS or a nine plus RAS, I should say. So he meets all the thresholds. Isaiah Johnson, safety out of Syracuse. Jalen Carlisle, safety out of Missouri. Willie Drew. Yeah, Willie Drew, cornerback out of Virginia State. Um, Frank Crum, uh, tidy, or tackle out of Wyoming. He comes in in the 236 spot. He meets the criteria. 
Uh, let's see, Ryan Watts, safety out of Texas at 245. Miles Cole, edge defender out of Texas Tech, um, coming in at 248. And then, of course, I just label these in the 600 spot as far as a score um, just to keep them at the bottom because it's all incomplete. But those players are Dubin, Dubin Okonko. Is that Conco. right? Conco. All right. I, I, love, I love the – the you less sure, sure we are, the less sure we are on the name, Jacob says it even more quieter. He's like, <laughs> so linebacker out of Pittsburgh State. Um, he meets the criteria. Harold Joyner sounds like a mechanic back home in Kentucky. Linebacker out of Michigan State. He meets the criteria. Bo Richter, linebacker out of Air Force, beats the criteria. Davius Richard, quarterback out of North Carolina Central. Um, not even sure how many classes they have out there. He meets the criteria. But I'm telling you, man, go look at his PFF. I'm going to pull his PFF grades up here in a minute. I want you guys to see that before we wrap up. Um, and then halfback, Michael Chris Ike out of Delaware State. He meets the criteria. So anything you want to hit on there, Jacob, as I pull up Mr. Davius Richard on PFF. Oh, man, that uh, that was fun to go through that. I actually – I didn't know that um, – that's a lot of guys, you know. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a good smattering. Good little smattering, Tim. What do you think, man? Yeah, man. Some time. there's a, a lot on here that were not on the, the radar until a few days ago, you know. And like you said, you're you wanted to stay to the top 100, top 150, and vertical boards, you know, creeping up on 400 names here. And uh, I can't wait to see the horizontal board, how it's gonna pan out here as we get closer to the draft. We're uh, days away here, people. Yeah, I wanted to get real creative with it, too, and try to create a graphic. I just don't know if I can pull it off. Um, if anyone could help me pull it off, it's uh, our boy Justin with Packernet Graphics. Oh, yeah. But, um, it's just I, I don't want to waste a whole lot of time trying to make things pretty. Go ahead, Jake. If you could read that one, buddy. No, Larry came through. I, I didn't mean to actually poke you, Larry. I was just giving you some grief. But he went in. He did a deep dive in that last <laughs> 20 minutes here. He goes Winston Reed, linebacker. Weber State, 6'1", 230, be 25 by the beginning of the season. So the Packers, you know, may be off uh, his board in his opinion. And he goes, but his stats basically look like he can tackle. He's the second in Weber history in solo tackles. So He can tackle. He I like that. <laughs> Come on, man. We need more of that, no doubt about it. All right, so here is Mr. Davius Richard. Look at this cat right here, man. Can you see it okay there, boys? Yeah. Let me see if I can zoom in just a touch there for we you. Go. Ooh, 6'3", 215. 6'3", 215. Um, PFF grades, 85.6, 91.1, then a 69.4, 63.6. That's going backwards. So the last two years, um, obviously 2023, 85.6, then 2022, 80, uh, 91.1. Um, you, you see that guy and you think, okay, North Carolina Central, Eagles, right? Obviously a smaller school. Who did he play against? That might be pra practice squad material right there, right? You might see hey, you know there. Alex Magoo, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> Alex, every time I hear Alex Magoo, man, I think Mr. Magoo, and I think of Ryan getting so angry because he got one of our receivers hurt in training camp. You remember that, Jacob? <laughs> oh, he threw, yeah, he threw it with something, some just meatball over the middle. It's schmucked. It was either Grant DeBose or Dontavian Wicks, one of those. It might have been DeBose. I think, I think it was DeBose, been. yeah. So, yep, there you go. Um, <laughs> Eric Sutherland, <laughs> Jacob led his little, team, his little league baseball team in tackles. <laughs> That's right. It was undefeated. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Randy Cleaver's trying to start a riot in here. He said, we're trading up in the first for a quarterback. <laughs> I am nervous, though. If Bo Nix is there at 25 or, like, Penix, I don't know, dude. Don't you dare. Bro, if they if they trade up in the first round, I'm gonna be like that Keenan and, and uh Pill skit where he's sitting there sweating and it's like pulling off of his <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, neck tattoo inbound, right? Oh, by the way, my dad texted me just this uh yesterday and he goes, Oh, I just got around to watching the two Jacobs episode with you and Clayton. Because me and my <laughs> me and my step uh, his he and my stepmom watched it and they were just laughing their butt off. I guess. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah, that was that was a fun episode, man. You gotta have some fun in the off season. Yeah. Um, Lord knows we're not gonna have fun during post game show whenever the Packers lose. Because I'm telling you, man, it's miserable. Is it not, Tim? It's everything. Yeah. Uh, it's everything in us to get on here after a loss, man. 
That's all right. It's only going to happen like four or five times this right. year, so we'll be all right. I like it. I like <laughs> it. That he can block episode, though, man. I'm telling you, that's that's the medicine I needed. <laughs> Tim Tim was ready to blow up. I'm over here just trying to keep it on the rails, and Emilio just a little innocent self. So he can block. block. He can block. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get out of here. Parting yep. thoughts, gentlemen. You got anything else you want to hit on? Oh, we got those graphics too, don't we, Jake? We're at the hour mark. You want to yeah, hit it? We'll, we'll grab those tomorrow. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Anything else, buddy? No, man. Um, I can't believe it. it's 12, 12 days, 11 days, whatever it is. Um, I'm starting to get like really excited, nervous in a way. Um, like you talked about, just because there's so many weird possibilities. We I feel like I'm over prepared. Like I've been drinking from a fire hose, but now I'm starting to really got that thing down and I'm, I, I've got it under control, but like we talked about today, there's all of a sudden now 10 to 15 players that I hadn't heard about until this episode. So the, the day is not done. Draft is still a couple weeks away. So we're going to keep cranking out content to make sure that I, the goal, how about this is a goal guys, that if the Packers take any one of their draft picks that none of us have that Snoop Dogg reaction where we're like, who? <laughs> that's the goal is that at least we've talked about him once or twice, maybe kick the name around at least looked at some yep. grades, you know, so that'd be well, that'd at be least cool. on the radar. Right. Yeah. Um, this is definitely the most prepared <laughs> I've ever been for a draft. Like, and I know we're not finished yet and we got a little ways to go, but it's just been, it's been an absolute blast, man. So chat just yeah, never needs to be doing anything. They just have to just keep gripping on me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I was trying to take a quick peek here and see who all met the threshold from the players that we had drafted on a regular basis. And if I'm looking correctly, the first one, and what I'm talking about is like Kool-Aid and McKinstry, we took him at 25. We took Cooper DeGene at 25. We took Amarius Mims at 25. We took Byron Murphy at 25. Um, we took Johnny Newton at 25 at one point. We took Powers Johnson at 25. We took Newbin at 41. We took Coles, Junior Colson at 41. We took Enos Rakestraw at 41. Christian Haynes at 58. Kamari Lassiter at 58. Chris Jenkins, out of all the people we drafted, was the first player that met all the thresholds. Hmm. So pretty interesting. Jeremiah Trotter. Probably wouldn't have met it, but again, I don't. I still haven't seen any of his pro day numbers. Have you seen that come across the wire? It's wild how they keep it. They must have everybody sign NDAs or something. Like it's just wild that that hasn't leaked out. But anyway, so Chris Jenkins is one of those players that I'm kind of looking up, going, "Hmm, that that might make a lot of sense there, right?" They've had him in for, I think they've had him in for a visit too, if I remember right. So, um, yeah. So. All right, Tim, you got you anything know, else? Yeah, you know, the more I think about it as we get closer, I'm if we're on the board at 25, we haven't traded up or down. We're picking at 25. I really believe we're gonna go D line or O line. I just it's the <laughs> gut gut feeling with the 25th pick we're taking a big boy for one of the lines. Um, we gotta shore up the trenches. I, I feel like that's gonna be the move. Um, like you said, as many times as, we, as we've mocked corners uh, and safeties with 25, um, I could see us going interior O-line. I could see us going tackle. I could see us going, you know, D-line. Like we said, Johnny Newton came to us a few times um, at 25. So uh, that's just kind of where I'm leaning right now. We'll see how I feel in another five mm -hmm. days as as more, uh, more chatter starts and uh, we get to see a little more uh, gamesmanship here in the draft uh mm -hmm. i'm sure we'll get a couple of news stories oh, sure yeah. some more speeding tickets or you know <laughs> guys on the giggle bush or whatever you know so uh it's that giggity. time of year man <laughs> on the giggity bush <laughs> on the giggity bush giggity oh that sounds kind of bad. that's a double non-tondra right there bro <laughs> things could be a lot worse i could be a bears fan <laughs> so um when you're talking 25 and we'll wrap up with this um, like a Baptist preacher, Southern Baptist preacher down and wrapped up four times now, right? Um, Graham Barton at 25 makes a lot of sense. He meets the thresholds, right? Um, the next one, again, uh, Tyler Gotten's one that they could potentially take at the 25 spot. I'd, I'd much rather get him at 58 if he's still there. I doubt he'll be there. But Graham Barton comes to mind. And then the next player 
um, would be maybe like a Cooper BB. Again, I've got him in the 36th spot. I'm just trying to think 25th pick, right? Maybe Chris Jenkins might be a reach to us, might not be a reach to them. Um, we got a guarantee from Eric Sutherland, though. Hey, he says, I hope he's right with this. With the 25th pick, the Packers make a trade back. That's a guarantee. And then trade up at 29 to take a quarterback. So Clayton goes to see it. <laughs> <laughs> what if they what if they trade out of the first round and I'm like, what if they trade down to like 33 and I'm like, oh, we're safe. And then they get like closer to 31 and they trade back in. The oh, oh, I'm, I'm it. back on the hook again. <laughs> be awesome. So, yeah, it's going to be a blast, man. The, the, the draft night festivities are going to be absolutely awesome. I'm excited about it. We're going to be giving away that autographed Paul Horning jersey. I know Eric Sutherland and a couple other people join the PTA posse over on Patreon. You can just search Packer fan. Total access on uh, Patreon or click on the link in the description of this video. You'll be able to find it there. Um, Eric Sutherland says he'll get a PTA tramp stamp if we stay at 25. Let's go. Let's in the state it. of Wisconsin, a verbal contract is binding. Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I just okay. snorted into the mic. Screenshot it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So. Oh. If they stick and pick, Eric Eric Sutherland's getting a PTA tramp stamp. If they trade up for a quarterback, I got to get a neck tattoo. And uh, Jacob, did we ever come up with anything for you? We didn't do. Did I don't think so. No, I, Jacob's going to shave his beard. beard. Oh shoot, beard. that's right. I have to shave the beard for Jacob. what now? What do I do? What's the criteria? If the Packers though? draft more than four people in the draft. You got to shave your beard. <laughs> Uh, all right, we're out, guys. We appreciate y'all putting up with us this evening. It was a lot of fun. We will see you tomorrow night for PTA. No, you ain't, Eric. Don't you back out. Oh, hey, why would we? Yeah, we do. It's free advertising. Yeah, but he has to ride a fun. motorcycle and he has to hike. Who's the advertising too? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're out here. You're gonna get me in trouble now, guys. All right, that so. is a possum in a dumpster. <laughs> Everybody have a wonderful evening. For those of you listening on the pod. Thank you for making us a part of your day. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world and go back. Go. The power sweep. Actually, it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. Yes, a Y in or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet. To get an isolation with the with the linebacker. Tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him. If he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. The YN has the linebacker in, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here, and a seal here, and try to run this play in the alley.